you know, I didn't, um, I didn't think being resentful was such a big thing, right? Even this word resent, being resentful, resentfulness, I never really paid much attention to it until I heard Jordan Peterson talk about it. And the first time I heard him talk about it was the story of Cain and Abel. And I'm sure you know what this story is. The first two humans that ever lived, and they were brothers, and one brother killed the other, right? Cain killed Abel. And the reason Cain killed Abel is because he had resent. So what does resent mean? And if you are someone who is experiencing resent in your life, then I'm going to tell you what I did in my life to overcome resentfulness because I used to have a lot of resent. I remember one time that when I was in Las Vegas and I had moved there after finishing my PhD, the week after I moved there and I was uh, picking up girls every night at the clubs, uh, I was drinking and, and doing psychedelics and just lots of stuff that my parents didn't want me to do. And especially my mom one day, on the phone, she told me, Farhan, never call us back. You are no longer our son. And that really triggered resent in me. I didn't know it at the time, right? I didn't really know what it was. I kind of like denied it. I kind of let it go. And I know that it built up inside me. And resent doesn't have to be just for parents or for your family or, uh, you know, even your children. Right. I, I know, again, with Jordan Peterson, one of the chapters in his first book, 12 Rules for Life, is don't let your, your don't let your children do anything that would make you hate them. Right. And that's, again, about resent. You don't want you don't want your children to do anything that will make you think that there is injustice de- being done to you in the world. Right. That's what resent is. The definition is when you feel that. You feel like a victim. You feel that there is injustice. Something is not fair, right? So let's break this thing down. And how it how does resent happen to us in different aspects of life? Let's start. Let's start with parents. Then I'm gonna go into religion and government and career and and lots of different topics. But let's start with parents, and because this is the one that resonates with me the most, right? When I when I was growing up, I was raised by very strict parents, right? Very religious, very conservative, um, going to, pr- you know, the prayer hall every day, making sure that I don't spend the night at someone's house, uh, make sh- making sure I don't make white friends, uh, making sure that I, that I do the prayers, that I sort of stay a good kid. And over the years, what would happen is people would sort of, think of me as an innocent child, right? Someone who is um, naive, right? We have this word bhola bhala in Urdu. And it basically means someone who is, who doesn't understand the dirty jokes, right? I remember many times my parents would uh, make a dirty joke with their, with their um, other friends and I would laugh because I got the joke, but they'd be like, ha ah, Farhan, why are you laughing? You don't even get the joke. Why are you laughing? They would make fun of me. And that triggered a shit ton of resent in my heart. I know this because I remember every time this happened, I anticipated this feeling and then that resent happened. But but remember, resent is also a form of dopamine, right? And I'm sure you know what dopamine is. It's the something that is triggered by the desire circuit, something that not necess- it, it's not something that you feel pre- pleasure with. It's not a pleasure molecule. It is something that is activated, that is triggered by you expecting a reward. And in this case, even the feeling of resent was a reward to me. Why? Because it's something unexpected. It gives me a negative emotion, right? It gives me a negative feeling. So... Over the years, that resent build up in me for my parents. And I'm going to soon get into how to solve the parental 
um, resentment, right? So th the structure of the video is going to be, I'm going to tell you a topic that I feel I felt resentment towards and how did I solve this resentment? What did I do in my life exactly to convert that resentment into something else, right? And I'm going to give you those solutions for the parents. So if you have felt in your life that maybe there is some hatred towards your parents or you think that they've done you wrong, that they didn't do their best, that they somehow stabbed you in the back, that the, 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 the cards you were dealt, you know, the parental cards you were dealt, are are unfair and 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 you regret you have a lot of regret then then let me tell you what you can do so in my life at the very beginning the solution is gratitude right gratitude so even though you have this thought that your parents did you wrong at least you have parents Right, and I know this is very cliche, and uh, it's hard to imagine yourself without parents. But do this exercise, right? Imagine that something happens, God forbid, and your parents pass away. One of my coaches in Afro D um, recently, his dad passed away, and you know he, he's having a funeral as we speak and lots of sadness in, in our Afro D family, in our group, in our team. And, uh, and, and, and I thought that, Hey, you know, what if my dad will die one day? And what if my dad died? And so the fact that I am here in this world, in this present moment, and I can feel emotion and that I have a heart, I have a brain, I have I was born on this earth and, and it was basically because if you believe in this, if you believe that your parents are real and you believe that they're, they're, they're your parents, then obviously they gave you birth. So you can be grateful towards them. So that's the first thing, right? Literally write down. And if you want to understand the entire science of gratitude, watch Andrew Huberman's lecture on the science of gratitude. I just saw it a couple of weeks ago. It was great. You know, he talked about how you need to write down how someone else has been grateful towards you, as well as how someone else has been grateful towards someone else. So if I sat down and figured out how, let's say my brother is grateful towards me, for my mom is grateful towards my dad. That sort of gratitude exercise takes us away from ourselves and makes us think of someone else. It gives us this empathetic feeling of getting into someone else's mind. And then that is how gratitude physiology is optimized. So. Go watch Andrew Huberman's video on gratitude if you if you are interested in the science. But I would recommend you you sit down and even force yourself to do this if you're not used to it. Sit down and write out exactly why your parents are grateful towards you. Do the opposite. Do the reverse. Get in your parents' mind. Why are they grateful towards you? Right. Why would they be grateful towards you? And then you also, deep in your heart, try to find gratitude to be alive, right? Gratitude to be the fact that you can access nature. You know, I'm very, I feel very grateful. I have nature around me all the time. I can do cold ice baths in the morning. I can do breath work every day. I can wake up at 4 a.m. And, and start the day with, with, with tons of energy and, and, and drive. And, and I feel very lucky. And a lot of that, obviously, is attributed to my genetics. And I didn't used to be like that, right? I used to sort of think that I lost a genetic lottery. You know, I'm, oh, you know, I'm born into a Pakistani family and Pakistanis are ugly and we're like 
not fit and, and, and all this stuff that the media taught me growing up in America. And now I'm very proud of that, right? I, I very on, very proudly tell people where I'm from and who I am and my name and who my parents are. And I'm very proud of that. And now this, this gratitude has really helped fix this a little bit. The gratitude had re has really helped me gain a perspective on things, right? So gratitude is number one. Now, what about number two? Number two is not simply being okay with the situation at hand, right? So for example, if let's say your parents have done you wrong, you don't have to accept it, right? That's like a Marcus Aurelius perspective. I don't know if you are aware of Stoicism or what Stoicism is, but Marcus Aurelius, who was the emperor of Rome, was a philosopher king. He has this, most of everything he said is, is great, but one of the things I don't agree with, I read last week in the book Meditations, he talks about how if you are, um, if you have a disease, if you have a dysfunction, just accept it rather than fight it, rather, rather than try to overcome it, rather than try to solve it, just accept it because it's probably really good for the world or nature wouldn't have done it. I disagree with this. So if you have built up resent towards your parents, I would recommend you don't accept if they've done you wrong, don't accept it express it fully literally go up to them write a letter to them speak freely with your parents if you're not getting the love that you deserve if there is something that they've done that you don't like that you don't agree with like i'll give you an example from my own life that happened just recently my mom uh, was a 208 pounds. She was overweight. Um, she needed to get knee surgery. That's what the doctor told her, that if she wants to be able to walk without knee pain, she has to get knee surgery. And one time when I was in Montreal, I saw my mom. She was going from upstairs to downstairs, and I saw her holding the the bar, you know, the railing that you have when you go from upstairs to downstairs. I saw her holding that and she could not walk down the stairs like a normal person, like, you know, how normal people walk down the stairs. She couldn't do it. She had gained so much weight. She had become so obese that her, her knees were bearing all the weight. Right? She didn't have activity in her feet. She didn't have activity in her, in her shoulders, in her hips, in her core. All the force was being placed on her knees. And the doctor told her she needed knee surgery. And I, when I saw her in Montreal, we were there for a family re reunion, I made the decision, right? Again, action, right? Action. I didn't accept that, oh, my mom has this disease of obesity, and now she's going to need this, 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 this uh, surgical procedure. I didn't accept it, right? So don't accept when something happens that is a disease or a dysfunction or a disorder. Don't accept it. Fight it. That's what I would say. Fight it till death, no matter what. So for my mom, when she, when I saw her, I made a decision that I was going to take a break from wherever I was. I was going to move in, you know, move near her, live in a hotel, whatever it takes. And I would fix this problem by myself. I would figure it out myself. And yeah, so I, I, I came back to Mexico where I live right now. I took my girlfriend. We both went to Texas. We lived in a hotel near my parents in Ulysses for three months. And thank God... Now it's been nine months and my mom has lost 35 pounds. And I'm so proud of her, right? So instead of being resentful, because I was resentful towards her, I was like, man, she's obese. You know, I'm in the health and fitness field. 
Um, I take care of myself. I eat healthy. I, I work out. Um, I, I meditate. I, I do all the, the things for men's health optimization. But my mom is obese and she's an embarrassment. So instead of having that resent, I made a decision to take action. And and now she's, uh, I, I saw her do the Superman. Uh, you know, the Superman, I don't know if you know this move, but look it up if you don't know. I saw her do the Superman about a couple of months ago. And I was so proud that my mom can do this. She's dancing. She's, um, I mean, if you look at her before and after photos, so she does these poses of her before and after, and it's phenomenal. Like she doesn't look anything like her, what she used to look like or feel like, right? She's so happy. She's traveling. When she cooks, she doesn't feel pain. And, 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 and believe it or not, both of my parents moved in with my coach Sumer, who's also her coach in Austin for a month. And they lived at his house and, 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 and did one-on-one -on -one coaching with him, right? An immersion coaching. And, uh, and they learned so much and, and my mom is happier than ever, but it started with a decision, right? So the second thing you can do to overcome resentment is take action and make a decision to solve what is happening. And what's important here is make a decision fast because your ego and your trauma from childhood and whatever is in your head will make you not take the action if you wait. So if you wait one day, two days, three days, you won't take the action. And this is something I've deeply, deeply learned in my life. Everything good that I've achieved or any success that I've had, any opportunity that I've taken advantage of, it was because I took action right away without fail. So this is the second thing I would suggest you do to overcome resentment. And right now, you know, I can, uh, I can feel gratitude towards my parents. I can feel love towards my parents. And taking that action, all the actions that I took, you know, going to Austin with them every two weeks, taking my mom, all those things happen so easily, right? Once you make a decision to do something great, just do forward motion. Make the, make the action happen right away. Don't wait for it. This is super, super important. And the third, the third one is something that will allow you to meditate, to, will allow you to have gratitude and will allow you to take action. And that is live a healthy life. Clean your own room first. Remember that we always try to criticize other people and, oh, look how fat this person looks. Look how ugly this person is. Look how insecure this person is. Don't do that. This is a Jordan Peterson role as well. Clean your own room first. Now, what does that mean? Before I could teach my mom about health, and this is probably why it took so long, because I hadn't fixed my health in that at that point, right? My health was still fucked up. So I reached a certain point in my life where I had already cleaned my room. And obviously I'm still cleaning my room. Cleaning room means you fix your own problems first. You, know, you shut the fuck up, you fix your own shit first, and then you help other people, right? Hero's journey. You find the, you find the dragon, you slay the dragon, and then you bring the gold back to your community. So I hadn't done that. So achieve the health status and, and that's where everything is, man. Health is where everything is. At the end of the day, whatever issues you're facing, if you fix your health, and I mean physical, mental, emotional, then you will be able to feel the gratitude. Because if you are unhealthy, 
if you are feeling like shit in the morning, if you're not able to go to sleep easily at night, if you look in the mirror and you don't like the way you look, if you don't have good emotional health with your family, with yourself, if you're not meditating and taking care of your mental health and and doing the journaling and and going for nature walks, being in the sunlight, getting your body to produce vitamin D, if you're not doing all of that, then forget about being grateful and forget about helping anyone and making decisions and taking action. Forget about it. So I recommend fix your health. And uh, what action can you take for all of these three, right? Gratitude, making decisions, and expressing yourself fully, and fixing your health. Well, what I would do is be part of a community. Be part of a friend circle of a brotherhood, which does that for you every single day. People who inspire you. People who are like-minded. People who are grateful. People who do take action. People who are healthy. And, and men who are taking charge of their lives and taking control of their own health. So if you have a community like that around already, in your neighborhood, in your family, in your with your relatives or your friend circle in your community, maybe it's a health club or, or a gym or whatever that is, join that. Be around people that have these three qualities that I just named. And that is how you will be able to, just through osmosis and feeling that every day, you will also be able to do that yourself. Now, if you don't have a community like that, because right? a lot of people don't have the privilege to have this type of community. If you don't, then join our community, right? We have a community. It's known as Afro D Nation. And it's free to join. If you go down below, you can find the link to this community. It's a Facebook group. There's right now, as I make this video, 11,000 members. And we are all inspiring each other to take action. There's uh, people who do gratitude, me included. We record videos and we show you how to do that. Show you how to take action to solve your health problems, whatever those are. If you want to if it's a, a weight loss issue or you want to boost testosterone level or optimize all your other male hormones or you want to be able to express your feminine side and your masculine side, whatever that is, there is a community for you and it is the best community online. And it's known as the Afro D Nation. So click the link below here, access that group and... Um, and yeah, I'll be there to answer any of your questions. I'm there every day, all the time. I'm checking every comment, every post. I have hired five full-time coaches, right? Jameson, Andre, Eitan, Josh, and Mike. Five full-time coaches devoted to helping you for free. Ask any question you have about men's health, um, any question you have about how to improve your life, how to improve your male hormones, how to live a better life, and how to achieve your dreams. It's all there for you, and it's all available for free. So, yeah, man, I'll uh, see you in the Facebook group. Thank you so much for watching this video about being resentful. If you have resent in your life, and you want to express that self at, uh, for yourself, then post that in the comments below. Tell me, why you're resentful in your life. And today I only made a video about parents because that's what my resent is, was the most. But there's resent about religion, about government, about relationships, about career, about the place you live. You, know, you, you hate where you live, for example, or um, maybe your body, the way you look, uh, your genetics. Like you can have a lot of resent. So if you have that type of resent, and you can deeply feel that resent. Comment below and let me know what that is. And what is the biggest obstacle you're facing that is keeping you away from overcoming that resent and living a life of freedom and gratitude and love and being in the moment, seeing 
being mindful of the thoughts that happen and seeing those thoughts as happening randomly. You know, thoughts come to us randomly. We don't know where thoughts come from, but they're happening all the time. Being able to live that life and being aware of all that and being aware of the insecurities, being aware of the anxiety. And then just that awareness um, is, is really great. And I hope that I continue to have this awareness as, as, I, uh, as I move on today after this video. All right, man, that's it. This is Dog Farhan. Keep flexing, uh, keep loving, keep enjoying nature. And I'll see you in the next video.